ExxonMobil is the world's largest company. The American multinational conglomerate has established its offices in Guyana. They've already started drilling, made 13 wells, which are very successful so far, and they're here for the long haul. This is One on One. I'm Paul McAdam, and with me in studio is the company's Senior Director of Public and Government Affairs, Dieter Mo. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Paul. We'll begin with an update on the vessel that is coming to Guyana. It is the largest type vessel um, of its kind to come down in this part of the region, to Lisa Destiny. What is the latest on that? I know it's still from Singapore. Sure. Where is it right now? Yeah, so Lisa Destiny is actually currently in the Indian Ocean mm -hmm. on its way. Um, it will be traveling through that ocean down around South Africa, and then it will be coming um, straight over to Guyanese waters in early September. Okay, so this is basically almost a month away. Yes. Any hiccups with the vessel so far in terms of sailing, the voyage, everything is going to according to schedule? No, yeah, it is. We're actually using two tugs to, to kind of bring it along. So to make sure that, you know, everything goes, uh, you know, safely and, and everything is maintained. And it's a lot of activity on board the vessel, kind of doing some additional checks. And the team on board is also doing kind of emergency response activities and continuing their training as well while they're on the sail over. So um, it's exciting. I'm hoping to... There, I think there'll be a switch out of some of the crew around South Africa. And when that happens, I think we'll have some Guyanese that have been on the vessel come back. So hopefully we can chat with those guys. Okay, they're going to be flown yeah, back to Guyana. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. How large, I know this is a converted oil tanker, but right. give me an idea. How large, how really large is this vessel? Sure. So length is 350 meters. So, you know, that's more than twice the size of Providence Stadium. So there's kind of more than two. It's almost three. Um, of, so, I mean, in terms of length, it, it's very, very large. It will hold um, up to 1.6 million barrels of oil, um, which is, is a pretty substantial amount. And then I guess if you think about how tall it is, it's about as tall as a lighthouse, um, kind of over um, by the Demerara River and uh, the ocean. So it's a, you know, su substantial in terms of size. And uh, actually, the next vessel will be a little bit larger. <laughs> but... But yeah, no, it's it's extremely large vessel, and uh, really, it's the most important piece um, to making sure that you know, we can produce oil and and get it here. So, it's called a floating production storage and offloading vessel. So it floats, obviously, it is a vessel of some sort, but really, it's a manufacturing facility. So the wells that are being drilled, and it, basically, it will come up flow lines into the production. That's where the production comes for. It will clean up the oil, remove the water, it'll remove any natural gas and separate it and then store it, which is a storage part of that. And then it will offload onto tankers. And once it offloads onto tankers, those tankers will be sold on the market and that's where revenues come in. Okay, so you sell oil by the tanker? Yes, one million barrel um, kind of shipments. <laughs> now, given the size of this vessel, obviously there's no way that could come in close to the shore. It right. has to remain. How far out will it be? Yeah, so it'll be stationed about 190 kilometers offshore. So yeah, it'll be, you know, what is that, 120 miles or so. So it's significantly far offshore. You know, I don't know that people will be able to see it, unfortunately. Um, but we'll, we'll try to get as many visuals and pictures for people to see so they can, they can see it and, and be a part of it, when it once it arrives. Transportation to and from the vessel for your crew, Heli by a helicopter? It is via helicopter, yeah. It's about, a, about an hour helicopter ride um, out to that area of the, of the block um, where we're operating, or where we will be. Okay, now I want to ask you the downstream. We're heading towards first oil in 2020. Is everything going according to schedule so far? It absolutely is. We are, we are on track. So we have, you know, the vessels on its way, which is a big important part of it, but there's been tons of activities ongoing offshore, which includes, you know, drilling the wells that we need. So three have com fully completed. Uh, we're working on a number of others. So we have two of our drill ships actually uh, working on uh, the wells. We'll have seven wells completed at time of first oil. And uh, that's what we need uh, at the beginning. And those are all on track. Uh, for that. All of the initial kind of flow lines have been laid down and we're working on kind of some of the connectors between the different manifolds that are going down there and then actually that hook up to what we call risers which basically help connect it up to the vessel, 
right? So they kind of are going to be floating <laughs> in there to be able to then connect up to the vessel. So basically, it's a whole kind of subsea infrastructure of lots of pipeline that are actually on the sea floor. And that has been going on since, you know, uh, second quarter or say April um, is when that work started. And we're on track there too. So tons of activity already going on offshore, being done safely. And then there's a ton of onshore activity, right? So all the folks that are getting ready to you know, welcome it and just be supporting the vessel offshore. Um, so it's an exciting time and everything is on track. Now that you mention it, as we talk about onshore, local content, yeah. there's been a lot of discussion about this um, in terms of the definition, but in terms of companies, how many companies, probably guesstimate, how many companies would you say are benefiting directly or indirectly that are Guyanese companies? Sure. Um, not the new ones, but Guyanese companies, I know a few have been established recently, to, to take advantage of this yeah, and part, so partnering with you guys. We track a kind of a quarterly basis, so we're gathering kind of our first half, but um, just through the first quarter alone, there's over 300 companies, uh, local Guyanese companies, uh, that are being utilized. Um, last year, I think for the total year, it was 499, so right close to 500. Um, so we're continuing to look for ways to utilize local companies, whether that's through you know partnerships, and um, opportunities for fabrication, rigging, and you know, a variety of different ways to continue to do that. So expect that to continue to increase over time. No, I know Exxon has its own standards in terms of, well, you mentioned rigging, fabrication, for example. We have people here who can do that, but I don't know if it'll be, it will be to your standard. If, say, you had a local company, we have a few companies who specialize in that, how can they get certified or be qualified to be part of, I mean, if they have yeah. to bid or whatever, how do we get a, how do we get a foot in the door? I know you had a forum the other day um, targeting local companies and addressing local content. Tell me a, a bit more about that. Yeah, so, so let me just step back just a little bit and say, you know, we support the Center for Local Business Development, which is targeted at small and medium-sized businesses to help one, learn about the oil and gas industry, to determine what types of activities are going to be needed kind of now and into the future, and then also an opportunity for companies to then also um, get quali quality certification uh, through some industry standards that we use. While not required, really helps the competitiveness of, of companies. Um, and the center actually helps through that process, you know, in terms of now the company has to do some investment, but the cent but basically, you know, walking through how that works. The center also um, offers a number of safety classes. Um, and a lot of times, uh, the companies that we're utilizing, a lot of our prime contractors that are doing work, work very closely with local, you know, co companies that they are using to then also help kind of, uh, you know, help kind of mentor and steward and, and, and make sure there's oversight to kind of help them in that realm to make sure, because I think really the, I think everyone understands how important it is to be safe mm -hmm. and um, doing the things the right way so everyone goes home the way they came to work. Safely yes. and alive. Absolutely. No, you mentioned the issue of safety. Um, you're into oil and petroleum. Sure. The big question is, what do we do in terms of an oil spill? Mm -hmm. I know you've been doing some work with the EPA um, and the CDC in yep. training and preparing for this. Absolutely. How is that going? Yeah, it's been going really well. Um, great collaboration, really, with the EPA and with the Civil Defense Commission. You know, there is a kind of national oil spill response plan that has been developed to kind of really in the final stages. Um, um, so that, that's a good, you know, first step. Uh, but we've done multiple different trainings. We've also done demonstration exercises along a couple of the different coastal lines that we're con and we're going to continue to do that work with you know, fisher folk see, yeah, and different community men. Exactly. Right, right. Just so people are aware of how that's done, they have an opportunity to understand um, and they'll become aware of, of how that works. Um, I think it's important that people have an understanding and make sure that they, you know, have information and they feel better about the plan um, should it ever come to that, even though we do feel it's very unlikely given all the, act, you know, protective measures we have in place, all the equipment we have in place for those uh, different activities uh, that we do to help with any risk that we do have in our operation. Uh, but, you know, it is important and we'll continue to do those activities uh, along the coastline particularly. Uh, your issues with the EP in terms of environmental permits, has that been resolved? Yeah, we have, you know, continue to work, you know, day to day on a variety of different things, whether they're for exploration or through, you know, um, 
permits for projects and different things. And um, yeah, you know, we have to have a collaborative relationship in terms of, you know, work together, answer their questions, and we provide information to make sure that we're, comp we're complying with laws and, and making sure that the environment remains safe. So absolutely. No, let me step back a little bit. Um, the Lisa Phase 1 development, what's been the, the development cost for that? And I know we, that's one and then there's two, where we touch on it a little bit, but what's been the cost so far for the Lisa Phase 1? So the, the full estimated cost is over $4 billion, so just over $4 billion, US, US. US. So a significant investment um, to be able to you know, bring oil and gas, you know, those resources, oil uh, resources um, to, to, to bear and to fruit. So uh, that's kind of the estimated resource and um, in terms of estimate, in terms of what we, what we project, projected um, when we started. And we continue to track costs and we try to look for ways to reduce those costs throughout the process. So um, I think we're doing well in that realm and, you know, we're excited about being able to bring production to reality. Uh, because part of that is, you know, we recoup that cost that was spent, but then also everyone starts to gain revenue um, at the end of the day starting next because, year. Because, yes, it is a company that is in the Absolutely. business of making money. Well, right, but then also the country, you know, right. the, the sooner we start producing, uh, the sooner the, the money comes to the country as well. How much um, income would you say Guyana has earned so far? A rough figure um, in terms of going towards government, because money has been spent, taxes have been paid, and so on. Um, about bank figure. So, so let me talk at least on the, lo the local content times to spend with companies because that's one I know off the top of my head. <laughs> I might Go have ahead. to follow up on the uh -huh. other one. Um, the EITI report would have had the latest, at least from 2017. Um, but in terms of um, spend, you know, last year it was uh, around 58 million US with local companies spend. Um, and then so far, first quarter of this year, it's, uh, it was about 24 million, so almost half actually. So we're already, you know, not even, it was like just that fourth of the way through the year. So actually our spend from 2015 to 2019 is or kind of doubled almost every year. And we're really probably on track to do about the same. Um, so to me, that's significant dollars that are going to the um, to Guyana, but then also those have a multiplier effects. Yes, yeah, because the the off spill effect from yeah. the companies that benefit. Yeah, as well. and we do expect that. You know that that will increase over time as well. Um, you know we're really in the early stages of uh, kind of moving forward as an industry, right? That's that, that's one project right. <laughs> and it's one company, uh, but as the industry continues to grow, that we expect that spend to continue to increase and revenues start to come in and, and over time that will it will it will grow. Lisa phase two development. Um, what is projected for that? Any any could you give an idea on how that's coming so far? Yeah, so phase two um, is going along really well. Uh, we did some early investment up front on phase two and so that's a new build um, a vessel in terms of so Lisa phase one you mentioned was a converted oil tanker and Lisa phase two is actually a converted build so we're able to that the kind of the shell the that'd be hull, a purpose built vessel it is uh -huh. specifically for here it's about nearly twice the size in terms of capacity uh, because of the it, it is about we expect you know Lisa phase one is about 120,000 up to 120,000 barrels a day um, at max, and then leads us to kind of phase two that the next vessel phase, the destiny is, is going to be built for 220 up to 220,000 barrels. So, you know, almost double uh, the size, and so it'll be, you know, larger. <laughs> and um, so, but that's well underway as well. And then we next year we'll begin the development drilling for uh, that project. Now, you have the noble Tom Madden, which is contracted to do some uh, drilling here for your production wells. Any other area that's going to be just is that just specifically for that? Yeah, purpose? so we have three uh, drilling rigs actually offshore currently. Um, so we have um, the Senna Karen, which is doing some appraisal uh, work um, offshore at some of the, basically looking at some of the discoveries we've already made and, and how trying to better understand how big that resource is. Um, and making sure, see, you know, what might that next project look like. Um, so Senna Karen is dedicated to that right now. The two others, we have the Noble Tom Madden and then the Noble Bog Douglas. They're actually doing wells both for the Lisa Phase 1. Um, and so they're actually both doing development wells. And then the Noble Tom Madden, you had mentioned, will move on to an exploration well 
after they do um, a, a little bit of time kind of working on this LISA project. And then they'll move back kind of over to kind of the turbo area where we call kind of a little bit more southeast of that block where we have a number of discoveries to, to, to do another exploration well. Now quickly, as a company, you must be concerned about competition. And I know because of what the successes you guys have had here, others are now coming in. Mm -hmm. um, what is your view on that? Well, it's important to have a lot of players in the industry, actually, right? Uh -huh. I mean, it, you know, it, it is important, and we're, we're really excited to see that Tolo is drilling um, just, you know, on one the side of the Stawbrook block. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah Irish. And uh, you, have, you have them. You have, I think, CGX, you know, potentially next year. You have Repsol, you know, that's doing work. So lots of different activity ongoing. I think that really just only bodes well for you know, growth of an industry, a new industry for Guyana. And I think that only can, can hopefully bring positive benefits to the country moving forward. On the issue of positive benefits, how does or does the, the current political climate, is something we can't escape, how does it affect or does it affect Exxon in any way? Um, would it affect production? What is your commitment to seeing this through? I know yeah. you said you, you're here for the long term. Yeah, absolutely. We are. Uh -huh. And that, that is important to say. So as a company that has worked in countries around the world for over 100 years, <laughs> you know, we have to work with all different governments all the time. And so our partnership is with the country of Guyana. It's very important. And so we absolutely will be working with whoever the people of Guyana, um, you know, elect as the, the government. Um, we work with current government. We've worked with past governments just here in Guyana. And uh, we'll continue to partner with the country moving forward. That's important. And we'll continue to do so um, for, you know, hopefully the benefit of everyone. Um, and as far as kind of impact of first oil, you know, we don't really see any impact. We're on track and we're continuing our operations uh, during this time. All right. Now, before we go, corporate social responsibility. Um, Exxon has made significant contributions um, in a number of areas, um, sports, um, a few community projects and so on. Tell me a little bit about that and how can communities expect to see, what can they expect to see from Exxon in yeah, this area? Absolutely. So we as a company, you know, and we bring the same philosophy to Guyana, we really want to be a part of the community and contribute to kind of economic and social well-being where we can, where we operate, where we live. And that's no different here in Guyana. So we've been excited to be able to play a small role really in some of the, the community kind of efforts really throughout Guyana. Actually, we've done a lot in a variety of different regions, really focused on activities that were kind of community empowerment activities, youth empowerment. So a lot of youth development through sport sponsorship activities on the sponsorship side of things. But then also things such as advancing science, technology, engineering, mathematics activities. Um, with Volunteer Youth Corps, kind of after school uh, programs. Work with the of we do work with the University of Guyana um, on a number of different things, whether it's Race for Pace for scholarship funds, or um, we've also done a number of different activities in terms of refurbishment of labs equipment um, throughout the years. So um, we're really excited to be a part of the community. Uh, we're continuing to look for opportunities to uh, do more, you know, in different regions. Um, we've done a number, you know, Region 9, we've done um, work with the Kanuku Mountain Group on seed banks, cassava seed banks and um, shade houses. And up in Region 1, we, we were able to um, help with actually a sports field um, that we just actually commissioned earlier this year. So. Um, we're excited to, you know, obviously we're not going to be able to do all things for all people, but to be able to play a role and, and, and assist in that area, we're excited about, and uh, we'll continue to, to advance that. All right. Uh, any final words before we go? Um, somebody who is looking, Exxon is here now. Mm -hmm. um, you're basically the face of Exxon in most of its public events. Um, what do you want to tell them about the company? Do they have any... Uh, misgivings, ideas, what, do you, what is Exxon about yeah. for Guyana? What does it mean for Guyana? Yeah, so, you know, we are an energy company, of course, but we're made up of a variety of different people, diverse backgrounds, and actually half of our employees are Guyanese. So, you know, we consider ourselves, you know, a Guyanese company. Um, and we are committed to being here for a very long time and to partnering with the country. And I think 
you know, over time, they'll continue to see kind of, you know, the, hopefully the truth <laughs> and, the, the, and the benefit part of that. Um, and I just encourage people to learn more about the company. If they have questions, um, you know, contact us, follow us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, our, our website, exxonmobil.com forward slash Guyana. So they continue to learn more about the industry um, and the potential opportunities that are available to people, whether it's through companies, uh, whether it's through uh, maybe job opportunities. Um, and, but then also how can revenues can be used, you know, longer term, um, uh, in different areas. Um, so we want to make sure that we're a good partner and, uh, we're here for the long haul. All right. All right. Thanks. Sue, yeah. Thank me you. Today. Paul. Appreciate All it. right. You're watching one on one with me in studio was Deidre Moore, ExxonMobil's senior director of public and government affairs. Thanks for watching.